Benny program, starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Rochester, uh, glad to have you aboard. Uh, batten down the hatch and sit down. Uh, uh, what do you want? Your breakfast is getting cold down on the lower deck. Well, I can't, uh, I can't leave now. I'm about to engage the enemy. Now watch. The enemy fleet is over here. Uh, boss, don't splash water on that bath mat. Quiet. Now I swing my carriers around like this and bring my destroyers over to this side and encircle them. There you are, Rochester. Now, if you were the enemy and I had you surrounded like that, what would you do? I'd pull out the plug and ground every ship you got. <laughs> Uh, 
Don't be silly. Being an admiral in the Nebraska Navy is serious business. Aye, sir. And anyway, I'm proud of my appointment. In fact, I'm sorry I didn't stay with her when I was in the service 24 years ago. Yes, sir, military life is a life for me. And those promotions... Now, Rochester, help me take my fleet out of the bathtub and now, then... Oh, so say, boss, I meant to tell you, Miss Livingston called... Oh, yes, yes, I better get ready. Boss, if you're going out, don't you think you ought to take off those medals? <laughs> huh? Oh, oh, oh well, half of them on your right side, you're listening to poets. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Say, I just happened to think of something. I promised to take my girl, Gladys Nabisco, too. I'll pick her up on the way to Miss Livingston. I hope Gladys and Mary are ready when I pick them up. Gladys Zabisco. I've been going with her now for nine years. Yum, da dum, da dee, bum, 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 bum. Oh, hello there, children. Hello, mister. Hello. You know who I am, don't you, children? I'm Jack Denny. Yes, we know. You tell us every time you see us. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes. You want to know something? Last night, our mother and father were talking about you. Really? Yeah, they thought we were asleep. <laughs> oh, oh, well, so long, children. Bye, Bye Mr. Mr. Benny. Benny. Hey, sis. What? He looks a lot older than 36, doesn't he? Uh, did you say something, Sonny? No, no, goodbye. Goodbye. Yum, da dum, da dum, bum, dum, dum, da dum. Gee, they're cute kids. But that little boy looks a lot older than seven. Bum, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, bum, bum. Well, hello, Don. Where are you going? Uh, I'm on my way down to the express office, Jack, to pick up a set of encyclopedias. A set of en encyclopedias? Yeah, and I've just got to tell you, Jack. I sent in two questions to a quiz program, and boy, did I stump those experts. Well, so long, Don. So long, Jack. <laughs> See, I like Don Wilson and his sly commercials. The way he tricks me into keeping my job. Really. <laughs> Phew. I better sing slower. I can't walk that fast. <laughs> oh, darn it. I meant to call Larry Stevens before I left the house and find out what he was going to sing on the program this evening. When I talked to Phil, he told me about the arrangement. I remember he said they were, they were going to use a harp. And four violins. I remember he said that, too. Say, that's going to be kind of nice. You know, with the harp in the background and the violins playing the soft melody. Yep. Yep, it ought to be a beautiful number. Someone was always in my dreams That someone was always you I never thought we'd meet someday, but now that my dream came true, I just want the right to love you all of my life, just the right to take care of
Yep, I bet that'll be beautiful, that song. Yum, da dum, ba bim, Oh, Mr. Benny. Huh? Oh, oh, it's you, Mr. Kearns. <laughs> How's the newspaper been? Oh, fine, fine. Funny, I always seem to run into you on the street. Well, I was just going over to your house to thank you for those stories you gave me. Oh, you mean how I found Mary Livingston? Mm-hmm, and how you found Rochester. Well, I'm glad you liked them. You know, those first two articles were very successful. And now my editor is interested in knowing how you found Phil Harris. Phil Harris? That's right. Hmm. Well, well, okay. Uh, walk along with me, Mr. Kearns, and I'll give you the whole story. All right. You see, it was ten years ago that I first met Phil Harris. I remember the day well because it was Mary's birthday and I wanted to show her a nice time. So I got all dressed up and went over to her house and let her make dinner for me. <laughs> and the meal was delicious. I remember we had thick sirloin steaks, smothered in onions, and stripped with bacon. Yes, sir. That was ten years ago. <laughs> Gosh, Mary, this is a terrific meal. Well, thank you, Jack. Gee, the steak is so tender and so easy to cut. Gee, it just melts in your mouth. Jack, put on your glasses. You're eating the butter. <laughs> well, anyway, Mary, it was sweet of you to invite me over to your apartment for dinner. And wait till you see the bottle of champagne I brought you for a birthday present. You know, you've heard of those famous imported champagnes like Vintage Premier and Chateau Calais. Yes. Well, this is a new brand. Savan Oop. <laughs> You know, uh, Mary, I was just thinking. Here it is, 1935, and it's been three years since I put you on my radio program. It's been over three years. Yep. Say, Mary, what would you do if I gave you a little raise? I'd quit my job at the May Company. <laughs> Don't worry, Mary. You just stick with me. In another two or three years, you won't have to work at the May Company. Except maybe Saturdays. Huh? <laughs> the day will come. Well, let's not talk about that, Jack. The evening's young, and it's my birthday, so let's do something. Well, uh, I was going to suggest something. What? Well, first, let's go over and sit on the sofa. Uh-huh. Then we'll snuggle up close to each other. Uh-huh. Then we'll turn the lights down low. Uh-huh. Then we'll tell ghost stories. <laughs> How about it? Well, Mama warned me about everything but this. <laughs> what? Jack, why don't we go out somewhere? Let's go to the Coconut Grove. Well, maybe... We... Hey, wait a minute, Mary. I've got an idea. There's a nightclub way downtown on North Figueroa Street, and there's a new band playing there. Let's see, what's the name of that band again? Oh, yes, Phil Harris and his syncopated serenaders from the Solid South. <laughs> Harris? I've never heard of him. Well, he's just coming up, and I'd like to go hear him, Mary, because, you know, I need a new orchestra for my program. All right, let's go. Okay, now let's see. Where's that nightclub now? Oh, yes, on Figueroa, about six miles east of the La Brea Tar Pits. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mary. Here it is, Mary. This is the place. Holy smoke, what a nightclub. This is an awful joint. Well, Mary, you can't tell anything about it from the outside. Yeah, but look at the name of it, the Ruiz Club. So what? Ruiz fell backwards is sewer. <laughs> All right, what's the difference? Huh? And look, Jack, you have to go down these stairs. Yeah. Okay, let's go down. Watch your step, Mary. <laughs> If I go down any farther, I'll get the bends here. I think we hit bottom, Jack. Here's the door. Oh, yes. (laughs) 
Well, that guy Harris knows all the new tunes, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, but how can people dance on that bare ground? <laughs> they probably sprinkle water on it to make it slippery. <laughs> and it helps keep the dust down, too, you know. Let's find a table. Uh, maybe that man will get us one. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, pardon me, are you a waiter? Well, what do you think I am with this napkin over my arm? A clothesline? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, but you're dressed too nice to be working in a joint like this. No. Oh, you mean these striped pants and this Prince Albert coat? Well, you see, I wear these clothes on my other job. Other job? Yes, I'm an undertaker's assistant. <laughs> oh. It was my idea to put the candles on the table. <laughs> hmm. And now would you like me to find a table and lay you out? <laughs> I mean, seat you? Yes, yes, please. Come on, Mary. Ah, here we are. Now, uh, what would you like to eat? Uh, nothing, thanks. We just came in to hear the band here. Well, you might as well order something. There's a minimum charge of 35 cents. <laughs> the 35 cents? Well, I'll have a chicken sandwich and a combination salad. And I'll have a steak sandwich and French fried potatoes. Anything to drink? No. You might as well. You've got 15 cents to go. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, bring us coffee. Imagine that waiter, an undertaker's assistant. Jack, look, the show's about to start. Good, I'm anxious to hear this guy, Phil Harris. Hi, you folks, and a good, good evening to each and every one of you. <clears throat> now, <laughs> welcome to our little club. This is your orchestra leader and master of the ceremonies, the one and only Phil Harris. Are you glad to see me? Sir, thank you, thank you, and we have a very lovely crowd here tonight. Hey, Mary, he's got a nice personality, you know? We'll see. And speaking of crowd, folks, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the club tonight. The panhandler stopped me and said, pardon me, mister, can you let me have $1,000.05 for a cup of coffee? So I said to him, I said, look, coffee only costs a nickel. What do you do? What do you want a thousand bucks for? So he says to me, this is going to kill you, folks. <laughs> he says to me, well, I got to pay my income tax, don't I? <laughs> No, lady, don't explain it to him. If he don't get it, just let him suffer. Let him lay it. Don't wake him up. <laughs> hey, Mary. Mary, did you get it? I got it all over me. <laughs> Quiet. This guy's good. He's and, good. And uh, here's another one, folks. Uh, this will embalm you. <laughs> <laughs> Mbomb you. Uh, did somebody call for me? <laughs> Quiet. Quiet. Get this, folks. A guy walked up to me today and said, Hey, Harris, uh, where'd you get the black eye? So I told him it was a birthmark. And he said, a birthmark? And I said, yeah, I got it in the wrong birth. <laughs> oh, yes, folks, it's just natural with me. Just natural. <laughs> yes, it's natural. Yes, yes. Just natural. Now we're rolling all new stuff here. All hey, Mary. New stuff. Hey, Mary. Mary, this guy is terrific. No, really, he'd be great on the radio. He's got something new, something different. Oh, you say that every time you see a man with hair. <laughs> oh, you just don't know class. Now, folks, for the high spot of the show, I'm going to sing a song I wrote myself entitled, That's What I Like About the South. <laughs> hey, I bet this will be good. You know that, man? Come with me to Alabama. Let's go see my dear old mammy. She's frying eggs and brawling hammy. That's what I like about the South. Hey, man, now there you can make no mistake. Where those dirt are never shaky. Ought to taste a lay of cakey. That's what I like about the oh, South. Oh, I gotta hire She's got guy. baked ribs and candied yams. Those sugar cured Virginia hams. Way down south in Alabama. And that's what I like about the South. Hot corn bread and black eyed peas. You can eat as much as you please. Hey, look at the way he snaps his fingers. Season. That's what I like about the South. Ah, don't take one. Have two. They're dark brown and chocolate. But two suits me, they must suit you, cause that's what I like about the South. Yes, now. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Never alone for in the club. Well, folks, that concludes our first floor show, but don't go away. There'll be another sensational show in five minutes. <laughs> Mary, I don't care what you say. That guy Harris would be great on my program. I want to get him over here. Hey, waiter, waiter. Yeah. Will you please bring the, um... <laughs> Will, uh, 
Will you please bring the orchestra leader over to my table? I'm sorry. He doesn't come with the 35 cent dinner. <laughs> Never mind the wisecracks. Bring him over here. All right. All right. I don't know, Mary. This guy, Harris, has a great personality. Cigarettes, cigarettes, also Cupid dolls, gardenias, and razor blades. <laughs> Imagine razor blades. Oh, miss, give me a pack of cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. What kind? Oh, by the way, miss, what's that you've got on your tray there, tied up in pink ribbon? That's a lock of Mr. Harris's hair, 20 cents. <laughs> oh. Well, I don't want it. You better take it. This is the last one left, and we don't shear them again till the first of the month. <laughs> no. No, thanks, just the same. Say, Mary, she's kind of cute. Oh, you fall for it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here comes Phil Harris. Now, Mary, I want to make an impression on him, and I want you to help me sign him for my show. Tell him what a good boss I am and how swell it is to work on the radio. And above above all, what a wonderful guy I am personally, you know? Oh, but Jack... Here he comes, huh? Hey, uh, I understand one of you characters want to see me. (laughs) Why, yes. uh, Yes, sit down. This is Miss Livingston. Hiya, sweet. Hmm. And uh, my name is Jack Benny. Look, bud, I ain't got much time. What did you want to see me about? Well, I wanted to talk to you about a job. A job? Yeah. Well, look, fella, I know things are tough, but uh, I can't use you. I, I, don't, I don't want no new help. Just... No, no, I don't mean that. You see, I have a radio program, and I'd like you and your band to be on my show. Well, I don't know. You see, I've oh, been... Oh, but here... he's a wonderful man to work for. He's the nicest boss I ever had. He's just a ginger, peachy boss. So pleasant, so gentle. Mary, you're like overdoing a... it, and stop... Stop licking my hand. <laughs> now, Mr. Harris... Uh, just call me Curly. Oh. Till the first of the month. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes, the cigarette girl told me. Now, Mr. Harris, radio is a different type of work. Uh, you read music, of course. Huh? <laughs> music, notes, arrangement. What's that on your music rack? Termites, the joints lousy with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, how could you be so young and bright when it's so dark down here? <laughs> You see, Mary, this guy is terrific. Oh, look, I'm only kidding. I've been studying music since I was a baby. Why, when I was six years old, my parents used to take me to the concerts at Carnegie Hall. A six-year-old kid interested in Carnegie Hall? Well, they told me it was a burlesque show. <laughs> a burlesque show? Yeah, how I used to whistle when they took the cover off of the bass fiddle. <laughs> Hey, Mary, this guy's got a terrific sense of humor. He'll probably be able to write my gags for me. I'll settle if he can just write. <laughs> now, look, Harris, I want you on my program, so if you'll meet me Sunday morning, he'll... Uh... Uh, wait, excuse me a minute. The second floor show's about to start, and I gotta introduce the singer. Oh, I'll wait till you're through. You know, Mary, I think this fella's... Hey, a... Jack, look who's gonna sing, the cigarette girl. Oh, yes. Hey, she's cute. You know? And now, folks, I want to introduce our singer, the sweetest little lady this side of Pismo Beach... Miss Trixie Laverne, who will sing a Mahelen Collie Baby. <laughs> well. Come to me, my Mahelen Collie Baby. Cuddle up and don't be blue. All your fears are. I can't you hear me calling when the rain at Emma falling? <laughs> why every day the sun is shining, why should I be home a pine? While my honey dear, while I drive away each tear. Or else I will be a melancholy. Oh, yes, I will be a melancholy. Or else I will be melancholy. Gosh, Mary, I'm a sucker for sentimental songs. <laughs> hey, Harris! Harris, come here a minute. Yeah? Say, that girl singer you've got isn't bad. That Trixie Laverne. Well, look, that's just her stage name. Her real name is Gladys Zabisco. <laughs> Gladys Zabisco, eh? Say, that's a pretty name, too. 
You know, I kind of like that, babe. Oh, come on, Jack. Let's get out of here. Why, Mary, you're jealous. <laughs> oh, fine. Hey, Harris, don't forget Sunday. I'll be there. So long, Jackson. You hear that, Mary? He called me Jackson. No one ever called me that before. All, All right, right folks. Go. Here's come a on. brand new number I wrote myself called That's What I Like About the South. <laughs> Come with me to Alabama. Let's go see my dear old mammy. She's frying eggs and crawling hammy. That's what I like about this town. And that, and that, Mr. Kearns, is how I met Phil Harris. Well, that really is a story. And I must say, Mr. Kearns, that Phil has been very fortunate in being associated with a great star like myself. A man who's been on the radio for so many years and who every year almost wins the Academy. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Bennett. Here comes my turn. Radio Service.